It's Platt, and today we try classic Belgian beer. That's next on Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is Chimay Premier Red, also known as Chimay Rouge, uh, depending on how you want to say that. Um, this particular beer comes to us from Chimay Brewery. Uh, a little background, Chimay Brewery. Chimay Brewery is located in at Scaramont Abbey. It is a Trappist monastery located in Chimay, Belgium. So they didn't have to go too far for the name. Uh, it is one of 14 breweries in the world uh, allowed to brew Trappist ales. Now here in the U.S. law, breweries produce Trappist-style ales, but technically they're not real Trappist beers. The Trappist monks uh, allow are the people that kind of regulate that and allow who can officially make Trappist ales. And this uh, Chimay is one of 14 breweries in the world allowed to do that. The brewery itself was founded in 1862. Now, a little info on, on the brewery itself and uh, how, how the whole thing works with the monastery. Proceeds from sales of the beer go back to uh, support the monastery and also local causes. Uh, when you buy this beer, you're not supporting a giant uh, corporate conglomerate. Uh, these beers still get distributed by, by corporate conglomerates, but as far as who actually produces the beer, it's not a huge corporate conglomerate. It actually goes to real humans in a real town and stuff like that. So kind of a cool story. There, um, the water used to produce the beer is uh, drawn from wells that are located on the monastery itself, so locally sourced water, which is always kind of a cool story. Uh, something they do that's similar to what gets done here in the States, but maybe a little cooler story, is uh, here in the States, a lot of breweries will donate spent grains from the brewing process to local farmers, your local cattle farmer, hog farmer, what have you. Well, they do something similar to Chimay, but it doesn't leave the premises. Um, actually, there is a farm on the monastery, and they give the spent grains to cattle on the monastery, and those cattle are dairy, they're dairy cattle, and uh, the milk from the dairy cattle is used to produce cheese. Uh, Chimay also produces a line of cheese, I believe four different cheeses. Uh, I have not tried them, but if it's anything like the beer, I'm definitely gonna look forward to it. Uh, kind of a cool story, kind of a circle of life kind of thing. You produce a beer, you give the grains to the cattle, the cattle produce milk, you take the milk to make cheese, then you pair the cheese with the beer, and life is good. So I, that's kind of a cool story. Uh, again, Chimay is not a major, you know, corporate brewery. They don't have a huge line of beers, but they do produce other beers. Uh, first is Chimay Blue, also known as Grand Reserve. It's a 9% ABV beer. Uh, copper brown in color. A lot of folks will tell you this is the classic Chimay. If you just had to try one beer from Chimay, that the blue is the classic. Um, how I was introduced to Chimay uh, about a little over 20 years ago, I worked at a bar that had prided itself on a wide variety of beers, and we had the red, and I, at the time I thought that was as cool as could be, but I remember another, another bartender there was like, oh no, kid, there's more, there's more, and she check out the blue. I'm like, more? You know, even higher ABV? Oh my God. So, um, yeah, but that's how I was introduced to Chimay, but a lot of people say the blue is the classic Chimay. Uh, next is Chimay Triple, it is an 8% uh, ABV golden ale. It's also known as Sink, C-I-N-Q, Sink Sense. It'll say that on, on the label. Uh, most of you out there will probably know of those beers along with the red. The, those are probably the, the three most popular Chimay. The next couple you may not have heard of, and these are kind of new to me too. Uh, they're Chimay 150. It is a 10% uh, alcohol by volume blonde ale. It was produced for the 150th anniversary of the brewery. Uh, it was supposed to be kind of a one-time thing, but again, once it kind of got out, people started liking it, it gained a little traction, and uh, Chimay has decided to keep producing it. Last but not least is Chimay Dori, or also Chimay Golden, a 4.8% ABV beer, by far their lowest ABV beer. Originally, this beer was brewed, I think it was brewed just for the monks, uh, but supposedly it was only to be consumed on the monastery premises, uh, I believed. For a while, if you came to visit the monastery and the brewery, you could sample it. Again, people started clamoring for it. They eventually started selling it to local pubs and restaurants. 
Uh, eventually, the beer made its way to Fuller's in the UK, and they start selling it at some of their pubs. And today, I believe some is finally getting distributed here to the U.S. So if you get a chance, if you see this, jump on it because it is a rare find. Well, before we try this particular Chimay, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought we would talk about the style Belgian double. Double spelled D-U-B-B-L-E, but it sounds like double, like a double in baseball or whatever. Um, ABV-wise, we're looking at mid-sixes to mid-sevens. Uh, we're definitely taking a step up from your Miller Lite, Coors Light, what have you. I don't think you're going to sit down and drink a six-pack of this, you know, while watching a game. Not saying some people aren't up for the challenge. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, you might uh, regret that later on. But, uh, you know, like I so said, just ramp up the ABV a little bit. Color-wise, we're looking at brown to very dark. Uh, darkish in color, but if you held up, you know, in the light, still clear. Uh, it's not a hazy uh, beer. Body-wise, mouth coating, uh, plenty of viscosity. Uh, carbonation, medium to high. Uh, that may be due to kind of cutting, you know, wanting to kind of cut through that more viscous body of the beer. Uh, Alcohol-wise, you're going to notice it. It's not going to be burn. It's not burning. It's not in that barley wine, Russian Imperial Stout type of thing. It's not. I wouldn't consider it a winter warmer. But about halfway through your, your first Chimay, you're like, oh wow, there, there's alcohol. <laughs> I can feel it. Uh, Finish-wise, this is a, a medium finish to it. There's plenty of body, but it doesn't linger on the palate too long. Um, there's real no real hop aroma or flavor in these type of beers. You do get a medium low hop bitterness. And I think that's just because, again, with a mouth coating body, a little more carbonation and at least some bitterness in there to bring some kind of balance so this beer's not too thick, too cloyingly sweet or whatever. So uh, that's the Belgian double style. Uh, again, you're not going to see a lot of variety, even though other places produce it. If it's a true Trappist Belgian double, they're going to be pretty consistent. Well, enough about Belgian doubles. Let's give this one a try. All right, well, you see, I had plenty of carbonation on that, and I wouldn't overly aggressively pour it. We got quite a bit of carbonation, so uh, we know that's true. Uh, holding it to the light, uh, dark copper in color. Let's get a little nose. All right, uh, again, no, none of that hops, but you get a little bit of that maltiness on the nose. Let's go ahead and give her a try. Oh man, plenty of those, uh, plenty of that malt, a uh, little bit of the darkness. You're not going to get into the kind of coffee espresso dark malts. You will pick up some light chocolate. Um, you do get a little bit of that classic Belgian funkiness. Um, one of those things, if you're not into Belgian beers and haven't drunk a lot of them, they really let the yeast uh, kind of go. I think I talked about this on the Dino S'mores video where they had a farmhouse ale that they uh, allowed the temperature to rise and let the esters and stuff of the yeast really come through. And that's just typical Belgian beers in general, even the Trappist beers. Um, going back a little bit to the malt, like I said, the, the malt is is uh, not in the coffee extreme side. Like I said, you might pick up some chocolate, but you also kind of pick up a little bit almost dark fruit uh, notes in it. Um, again, not going to the barley wine end of it, where those style beers, you really notice it. These are a little more subtle. Um, top her off there. Yeah, these are a little more subtle as far as those type of the dark fruit notes. <clears throat> uh, you get a little bit of toffee notes too. 
from those darker malts we're talking about um, a little more than the biscuit in but like a, a dark you know a, a, maybe a dark toasted bread uh, maybe like a dark rye or something like that so think you know toffee light chocolate you know a, a, a toasted dark bread that you kind of pick up almost the sweetness off of uh, but just a classic well-executed beer plenty of body um, but again balance it's not too sweet you do get that sweet uh, punch from the tongue but nothing too over the top well I hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below also please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content if you have any questions comments concerns or beers that you'd like me to try please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.